zigzag, zigzag Drogon. That's the shadow from the from the dream. No. No. Just gotta say, I'm very glad we didn't have to watch Robert's Rebellion, otherwise no one would have wanted Robert and Ned on the throne. It's ugly, isn't it? It's really ugly. Oh shit, what the fuck? Norseman! There's a Norseman doing that! That's horrific. Fucking kill him. Well done, John. Fucking prick. Kingslayer. Oh, fuck off. You fuck off. If you kill another king before you die, they'll sing about you forever. Come on. You're no king. Oh, but I am. And I fucked the queen. <sighs> if I oh, was... no. Whoa! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Solid have breached the gates of the Red Keep. You've had it. That's wildfire. Oh, it's all the caches, isn't it? <laughs> you knew that would happen, but. Off with his head. But I got you. Jamie's dying. I'm the man who killed Jamie Lannister. Oh, well done, you fucking idiot. <sighs> oh my god, it's so weird to see them there. I'm going to kill her. Don't do it, Arya. You come with me. You die here. I have a feeling she's gonna go in anyway. Sandor. Sandor. Thank you. Just wanted to pause it here before we go in the final bit to say it looks like they are going for the milk toast ending, which is to create 
the conditions whereby John has to betray. John can betray Daenerys so that he can become king um, without us seeing it as dishonourable because he'd be doing it for a good thing. And I'm really personally disappointed that they went that way. I think it's a shame, but I am at this very moment choosing to let that go because I really just want to be told the story that they're telling me and I'm going to be invested in it, whatever happens. But I wanted it on the record. <laughs> this is not the end that I wanted. I don't think it's the best um, that they could have done, but it's absolutely captivating to watch. And I'm sitting here stunned and in a bit. That was absolutely amazing to actually see that moment between Arya and the Hound. Um, what I'm worrying about now is that Arya is going to kill Drogon and Daenerys in order to prevent uh, Sandor dying in the Red Keep. Again, I'm very unhappy with this decision, but... I know they're going to execute it fantastically, so let's do it. Play. I can't lie, I'm enjoying this. Now you're outside. Whoa! Atticus. Hey, Grace. <gasps> like this? Hello, big brother. Oh my god. Sir Gregor, stay by my side. Sir Gregor, I command you. Obey your queen, Sir Is she gonna kill her? <gasps> oh my god! Cersei running off. So that gets Cersei to join and shit. <laughs> Bye mate. He's got the higher ground. Oh shit. It's like zombie Varus. Yeah. That's you. Chills. I actually thought like a little ant or something was on me then because I felt chills on my hands. It's adrenaline. Here we are again. You do not deserve his loyalty. Feeling like my favourite character is gonna kill my second favourite character right now, and that is not gonna be nice. Oh! I thought she had a face on then. Oh 
Come on! the wildfire. thought about that a long time before now, so see. Look at me! Just look at me! Nothing else matters. <laughs> Nothing else matters. Only us. Really? This is a tragedy. All around, this is a fucking tragedy. Based on what we see in this episode. Oh no. Oh no, I just thought even something worse could happen. Daenerys could kill Arya. I think this episode is going to take a lot of shit. This is an absolute tragedy. Daenerys' character arc is ending with her being Queen of the Ashes. Literally. 
uh, Jamie's character arc <laughs> is ending with him actually going back to save Cersei. He wasn't trying to kill her. He wasn't trying to stop her and save the city. It was just nothing else matters. Only us. That is enormously disappointing. And then it looks like we're going to have probably Daenerys put down next episode because, you know, she's a mad queen and she's a zealot. And, um, yay, the Starks. Or whatever comes out of that. She's just such a shame. It's such a shame. Because that's the ending everyone guessed. I don't see how the thing could flip at this point. But Game of Thrones has fucked me up before and I've thought of knowing what's going on. So I'm still waiting for the finale before I've made my decision on how I feel completely. How I feel after that episode is like sick and depressed. And I don't understand why they've kind of allowed all of the other heroes in Game of Thrones, like a sympathetic view of them in battle and not Daenerys. So I feel like wronged as for her character of just like what they just showed is the reality of war. But in this case, you, you could say, well, these costs didn't have to be paid because the Lannister army had stood down. All of the scorpions had been taken out. The Iron Fleet had been but you know, burnt down. Which then makes me think, well, why did we do all this? Why didn't we just do this in the first place anyway? Because actually, if we'd have done this in the beginning when Daenerys said that's what they should have done, she wouldn't have been in the sort of mental state where she would have done what she just did. Which feels contrived to me. Like, that wasn't even close. And we've all got all our depleted forces. It was just a piece of cake. We could have taken that three ages ago. Barely anyone would have died. That's just annoying. And we're now in a situation where I can absolutely cannot disagree with the way things have gone now. How would any of us feel if we were in that circumstance looking up at a dragon and the whole city's burned. She didn't need to burn the whole city. What the fuck is going on? That went on forever. She was like going street by street, burning everyone and everything. And not Cersei. You don't think she'd have flown straight to Red to keep and burnt, burnt that thing to the ground? This is just bullshit. Oh, I don't like it. It's too contrived. It's just too contrived. And I really don't like it when I can see the strings. And I can see the strings in this episode. Because it's like, oh, look, Arya's seeing all of this devastation and John's seeing all of this devastation. And that means, you know, they got to get rid of her. They're good. For turning on her now. They needed to create a pretext by which they could do this as as a writing team, and I feel like it's uns it's unsatisfying for me. Could be completely satisfying if you've got a different view of the show, like your team Sansa or just Team Stark. Period. As I say, my favorite character is Arya. My second favorite character is Daenerys. So. You know, when it comes to who I most want to make it to the end and who I'm most invested in, it's it's Arya. But that felt just contrived that you would have her, you know, look. It's like they're, tr they're just hitting us over the head with it so hard. And I feel like didn't lay up the Mad Queen stuff. It just feels really backloaded. Like all of a sudden everyone's just gone, she's mad. And then she's gone mad. Um... 
and the flip side of the argument if you're not a soft-hearted liberal like me um but if you're watching this from point of view of like a military realist is this is what conquest looks like and it's fucking awful and it's never looked any different didn't look any different when Aegon the Conqueror united the Seven Kingdoms. Wouldn't have looked any different when during Robert's Rebellion. We just didn't see it. I mean, those were North. That was a Northman raping, you know, looking to rape the woman. And the hound goes out like. <sighs> I just feel like, what was the point of that death for the hound? I did like the way that the mountain just offed Kyber and like nobody, like he was nothing. That I did find satisfying because I'm not invested in Kyber at all. And I thought it was a fitting end. And I'm really glad to see him die because it was Talisa that saved him in the first place. Like he would have been dead at Harren Hall way back, probably at the hands of the mountain. I think it would have been the mountain that, um, you know, when they burnt down Harren Hall, because I think it was the mountain, Tywin left the mountain in charge, I think. So, the mountain got him in the end. That was good. I really liked the first kind of third of the battle, where we finally got the effective use of the dragon and the army. And that was a, finally a good plan. Take out the Iron Fleet, take out the Scorpions, and use the dragon for those reasons and then blow the wall from behind so they literally did not know what the fuck was going on the golden company might as well not have even existed they, they would harry strickland two words fuck off gone then we you know john and the troops come flying through everything's looking great we get the surrender bells cersei's fucked and that obviously was where the episode turned I did notice at the beginning I said that they'd subverted the dragon theme so I was I actually was fairly certain at the point that I acknowledged the subverted dragon theme that they had committed to the Mad Queen narrative so I kind of had to let go there of kind of any hope that that was going to go any other way in that moment and again we've got a whole other episode to go so I don't know what's going to what's going to happen then but I feel weirdly down on that episode I really want to watch it again I'm going to watch it again straight away and just take it in and let it breathe a bit but yeah kind of my immediate reaction is I thought as always with Game of Thrones it's not it's great in terms of the way they're executing it you know the it mate I felt stuff all the way through that episode it was a horrific look inside what it is to live through an attack like that. And I haven't lived through an attack with uh, a dragon, but I have lived through an attack with F-16s and tanks and gunships. Okay, so um, the loud bombing that, that just happened um, was actually Israel bombing a graveyard, which is just uh, 300 metres from, from the hotel. Shit! So they're bombing close enough that you just felt the shockwave come through the curtains. I really hope that came through on the camera. Um, uh, in the middle there was shelling and I stopped momentarily because you can actually hear kids, uh, children screaming from nearby. It's just really scary. So this is not the first time I've heard bombers drop on 
drop on Gaza or Palestine, but this just feels like a whole other, a whole other level of horror. There's 12 people died overnight, five of them children, three of them women, one of the women was 32 weeks pregnant. It's just complete and utter devastation, and in the last, since the ceasefire broke, on Tuesday, there has barely been a period longer than 15 minutes where there hasn't been a shell, a, a, a missile from an F-16. We've had artillery fire coming from tanks and from gunboats that are positioned off of the west coast. It has been constant, it's been relentless, and this is very much the reality of life in Gaza right now. It's not very pleasant. And I thought they did a good job of creating the sense of chaos and indiscriminate nature of warfare which is always horrific there's really no such thing as a glorious war that's what war always looks like but the question is was where does this leave us now because john's clearly horrified aria's furious I don't think our queen is going to get a happy ending. Oh my god, Varys dying as well. Like, that was such a... We didn't even really see it. I mean, look at me. Look how disappointed I am. This is as, about as disappointed as I get with a plot. I'm majorly disappointed. <laughs> but... Was it a bad episode of television? No. That was still an extraordinary episode of television. I just absolutely disagree with the way that they're choosing to complete the plot lines. That's separate from is it awful television? And I'm thankful I'm able to separate the two because it means I can still enjoy something even when I'm apoplectic about the way that people have chosen to do something i'm stunned they've gone that route it's the first time i felt game of thrones in terms of the development of things be trite but i don't think they're going to be losing any sleep over that because they can still rightly sit down and go we've basically created the greatest season series of television of all time um i think it will be a lot more satisfying this episode to people who kind of turned on danny earlier in the process I guess they're going to be feeling like a massive sense of vindication. So maybe from the point of view of the writers, they would satisfy more people by going that way. Because I think far more people are Stark loyalists than are Danny loyalists at this point, I would say probably in the fandom. So I think on balance, they've probably picked the, the more crowd pleasing ending. But I would suspect that even amongst those people, there will probably be a fair chunk who are book readers and who are, um, you know, real fans of the game itself and everything else that will probably find this far too sort of simplistic. So it'll be really, in, I'm really actually looking forward to watching the reactions to this. Um, I'm glad Ari is still alive. I'm, I cannot believe that this thing is winding up with my two favourite characters probably going to be at each other's throats, literally. And either Arya or Daenerys dying is just devastating. But based on what they've written, written, like, I can't justify the burning of King's Landing. So there's a difference in what I'm not saying it was right. I'm saying it was fucking disgusting what happened. But I'm also saying it was lazy writing that it happened. They've made their decision. So no more debate um, about that from me. But I am, I am disappointed. And yeah, I'm just sad really that kind of when the Starks were getting their revenge, it was sympathetically portrayed and yet Grey Worm and Daenerys it's crazed madness I find that kind of weird 
I hope the books don't go this route. You know, when they did the previously on, it was like, oh, I get it. Yeah, they're showing us all of the indications that this was how Daenerys' plot arc was going to go. But it's just so sad. And is that, was that the end of Cersei just under some rubble? Is that it? I'm kind of disappointed that we haven't really had much Cersei this season. They haven't really given her much to do. And I'm really sad that she went out with a whimper rather than a bang. Yeah, so I'm going to continue to think about this episode. I'm going to give it a rewatch. And just sort of sit with it for a bit. And also, obviously, we've got the finale next week. Um, which is the point at which we know the season is done. It's the end of Game of Thrones. It, the episode has left me shell-shocked. Look at me. I'm massively disappointed. And what is even Tyrion going to do now? Yeah, I think there's every possibility once I've got over the extreme disappointment about them heel-turning my second favourite character in the show. And I think one of the most iconic, extraordinary characters in television history. I could feel very differently about this episode, but I really want to give an authentic review rather than try and like gloss over things for the sake of kind of being nice or saving face frankly because I know you know it this will be very entertaining for people who are like ha, 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 you love daddy we told you she was evil and we were right but it's like that's guys that's just a shitty way to be as a person um but I would have been exactly the same had daddy not heel turned so I can take my lumps I would have absolutely been like see I told you you got duped. That I would have totally done it. So I can't complain when the, the, the roles are reversed. Um, but yeah, I will sit with it. I'll think about it. And then I might do a separate video or just talk about it at the introduction to the final episode. Um, but yeah, that's me done for now. What did you think about this episode? What did you What do you think so far about the season? And how are you feeling going into the finale? I'd really, really love to hear your thoughts. And again, please, we don't have to agree to be able to respect each other. Please don't attack people in the comments because they love Danny or they hate Danny. Or, but let's, you know, this is a show. What we have in common is that we love it. And that makes us very passionate about our characters. Let's not be assholes about it, though, eh? All right, until the next time, bye-bye.